we cannot uh, trust media. They are lying. <laughs> That's her exact sentence that he told. Uh, he told me the argument we're having right now over energy could put Holland under water, and I hadn't thought about that before. But oh my goodness, that has got to be just that alone. Just that fact alone needs to make us step back and take a look at what we're doing because we're jeopardizing people's lives, not just their livelihoods, but also their lives. I think we are witnessing the kind of decline of uh, Western European civilization led by extreme ideology. And I think uh, this is not done by naturally. This is done by intentional um, thinking. Hi, Masako. Hello. Good to see you. Uh, yes, nice to see you again. So you've been in Ireland, have you? Yes, and I'm in London now. Oh, you're in London. How was Ireland? Uh, it was uh, great. Actually, uh, I got great education. Uh, what did you learn? You told me that you saw the separation wall between North and South. Yes, yes. Uh, I I, I haven't know. seen it. I haven't seen it myself. So I'm curious uh, about it. I have never been to a place with such an intention, uh, a high tense. And uh. I was recording while I was uh, doing this cab tour. Mm -hmm. And the driver took us to protestant side and his explanation was very interesting and I was I kept recording but he mm -hmm. noticed me recording and the driver told me please do not upload this video on social media mm -hmm. because other uh, driver in the past have death uh, threat. So oh my goodness. <laughs> what kind of a protest was it? Um, uh, no, it's a Protestant area. So there is a wall. Oh, oh, okay. One Protestant area and Catholic area. Oh, so, a Protest Protestant area. Ah, I get it. Okay, so there's still tension there then between Protestants and Catholic Catholic people. Yes, ve very much. Mm. Yes, mm. yes. I see. Mm. That's too bad. Uh, yes, and actually, um, the, in the end of the tour, I was... Um, allowed to write something on the peaceful so mm -hmm. i wrote prayer from japan <laughs> and oh good with my name <laughs> so i hope this will uh come to peaceful um, progress <laughs> but uh, yes it's really difficult i understand oh i think all the prayers may i think prayers make all the difference and so i, I think that's a great idea and so when did when did you come over from Japan? When did you leave home? How long ago now? Uh, 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 June 1st. Oh my goodness, you've been on the road a long time. Yes. <laughs> now you live on the road. You just live on the road, right? It's not a trip. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's, that's correct. Uh, right now I am putting myself that's... in like a self-study abroad trip. So mm -hmm. I'm learning a lot so that I can understand and deliver the truth to Japanese people and the world. Well, I saw that you, I'm just going to say that you have a book, Battle in Okinawa to Protect Japan. And I, okay. you wrote this book. I don't, it doesn't say when you wrote it. When did you write that book? Uh, I think it's about around 2000 or 16 yes it was, mm. uh, yeah that's my first book so what's it about uh, it's about um, it's about how we can um, protect Japan from outside of threat especially threat from CCP mm -hmm. because I live in Okinawa uh, there is controversial issue concerning about U.S. military, but uh, it's a problem created by media. So if we are not deceived by media, then we have good relationship between Japan and America. But oh, that's, hmm. oh, that's very complicated, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Local people, we are friends, 
with many American soldiers and people get intermarried. So we have really good relationship. And sometimes, yeah. unfortunately, uh, some crime happens, but that cannot be the reason to say we want American military out of Okinawa. That's how propaganda by CCP or extremists in Japan wants to spread. So I'm trying to um, make, um, I'm trying to spread real view of Okinawan people. And uh, yes, that's what I, my activity originally started. I see. And you also translated Candace Owens' book, um, Blackout, How Black America Can Make Its Second Escape from the Democratic Plantation. So uh, I read that, or I read that today, just in preparation for speaking with you. Uh, so did you translate that book after you, your book was written or before? Oh, it wasn't written very long ago, so it must have been after. Huh? Yeah. Yes, uh, actually, the translation version of Blackout was published in uh, two, uh, this year, April. And the reason why we published this is because she focuses on Black community. But what America is uh, facing in terms of a Black community is the essence is the same with what we face. So, oh, um, I see. Mm. Yes. So yeah, so I read the book, and uh, she's a she's a conservative thinker. Uh, she's a, a she's a religious believer. Uh, she believes in traditional values. I share all of that with Candace Owens, and possibly also with you. Um, and she was trying she was trying to tell about some of the myths that are active in our society, the myths that are misleading people into feeling like we are victims of oppressive patriarchy. And uh, I thought it was a very good book and, and one that people should pay attention to because, well, she's not afraid to tell the truth. And so that's what we need these days are people who are unafraid to tell the truth. What made you into someone who wanted to tell the truth? Um, I think I have great influence by my father. And that led me to do what I do now. And when I was a uh, little, my father always uh, taught me, today I'm going to teach you something about uh, other kids don't get to learn. <laughs> then he will say, we cannot uh, trust media. They are lying. <laughs> That's her exact sentence that he taught, uh, he told me. And he said, uh, only one thing we can trust in newspaper is the date on newspaper. <laughs> 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 so that was my early e education. <laughs> so, oh, I see. Ah. <laughs> I wonder what made him so wise. What do you think it made him think that way? Uh, I think he, he is a bookworm. So every mm. time I see him, he is reading something. <laughs> he never stopped reading. And I think that's why he uh, realized what's really happening, despite of those corporate media, TV, and newspaper telling us. So I think, and also, um, my name, family name is Ganaha. It's three <laughs> syllable, Ganaha. And it is said to be the people who have three syllable family name is descendant of samurai. <laughs> so, oh, I see. Aha, uh -huh, warriors. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, uh, I think that's one of my uh, core value that I'm descendant of samurai, so I have to do something. And <laughs> it's really simple, <laughs> but I, I felt it like this all the time when I was little. Oh, well, that's, that's very cool that you have that deep in your heart. And uh, I think that we've lost a lot of what is deep in our hearts because of the culture uh, wars that we're going through now and the um, and the demonization of uh, the church and God and religion so we've been pulled away from what couldn't what can uh, ground us 
strongly and give us hope and courage. So uh, I think that your dad did you uh, quite a service in giving you that. Yes, um, I think I, I really have to um, appreciate my uh, parents. And also, uh, they always said that we have to live in a traditional way. Otherwise, we will be left alone. And we are not in, uh, we are not just a uh, one single person. We are living in a tree. So I'm not floating away. I'm in this uh, family tree. That's always mm -hmm. made me realize I have to think for the past in my uh, country, country, my uh, history. And I, this is now it's my turn to successfully uh, give uh, baton to next generation. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so having said this, I am a little bit uh, worried about, um, I am still single. <laughs> so, Right now, my number one duty, kind of, I must say, uh, to find someone and get married. <laughs> yes, I agree. That's very to... important. I yes. agree. I agree. Yes. And that's something that has also been forgotten, or at least women have been dissuaded from following their dream of being married and having a family rather than uh, being completely fulfilled by their career. Although I, I believe that you have to find meaning in your life from what you're interested in and what and what what pulls you, the uh, the family, it grounds you like that tree that you're talking about, right? So it, it really does keep you sane to be in 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 the middle of a, a, a family, then you you know your kids and your husband can tell you when you're when you're acting crazy and when you're acting sane, right? So we need that. So yes, I I uh, I think that that's a very good idea. I was thinking of uh, dating apps. Are you looking? Are you actually actively looking for a husband right now, or are you uh, going to go home? Uh, yes, uh, I'm going back to Japan soon. But uh, okay. by saying this in front of a camera, it's part of my <laughs> finding somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yes, finding somebody. Where are where are, are you, Prince Charming? Right. <laughs> yes, and we, you know, women. We think we've changed. We haven't changed. We're still women. You know, I mean, there's all sorts of ideas out there that are, that are influence uh, what we might think, but deep down, we're still exactly who we were, and. You know, the birth control pill, I think, has been destabilizing because now we have control of our biology, so now we don't know who we are. And the feminists have told us that career is going to run our lives, so now we're not sure what we should be aiming for. And and we've lost our mooring in religion, so now we're not grounded and solid in, in our community. So I can see why that you are traveling right now. And to go out young like this, then you can be a good force for your husband and your children. Uh, yes, yes. I, I mm -hmm. hope I will be a good mm -hmm. mother and good wife. <laughs> yeah, uh, I yes. think that's a great idea. So we met, we met in the Netherlands. I wanted to talk about where we met and what you thought about that. Yes, uh, I got a great opportunity to accompany uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson and Tammy uh, to visit a farmer in Netherlands. And that's uh, the first time I met you. And mm -hmm. we had a great conversation with farmer in terms of, of what happening in Netherlands. And, um, and then at the same night, I got uh, opportunity to listen to one of the lecture. Uh, Jordan mm -hmm. Peterson is going all over the world now. And I was amazed to see this huge crowd <laughs> gathering at the uh, RAI theater. And I remember, and I saw some of the Antifa crowd outside and <laughs> tried to protest. But I think it made him even more, uh, uh, you know, like a little bit entertainment for the people, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> yes, yes, thanks to the protesters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So it was interesting to go out and see the farmer. You know, I'm from Canada, and my 
uncle was a farmer, and I spent quite a bit of time as a child visiting the farm, and he had cows and pigs on his farm, and he and he had wheat, so he had uh, grain as well as animals, and uh, I learned to milk the cows, and I saw the little piglets being born as a child, and so it was quite a, a formative time for me. So it was interesting to go to a farm uh, and to talk to the farmer, but what I was most disturbed by and had no idea about was that the electricity on his farm pumps the water from the field constantly. And so if the electricity grid doesn't work, and if the electricity goes off, then he would be four meters, his farmland would be four meters underwater. And that really means that the whole idea of the crisis, the argument we're having right now over energy could put Holland underwater. And I hadn't thought about that before, but oh my goodness, that has got to be just that alone, just that fact alone needs to make us step back and take a look at what we're doing because we're jeopardizing people's lives, not just their livelihoods, but also their lives, their homes, their country. You know, this is just, it's absolutely crazy. So I was very grateful to be there. And with, with uh, we were there with a the reporter as well, Michael. We were there with Michael as well. And uh, he seems like a very thoughtful and careful person who's... Uh, putting himself forward to understand what's going on in the world as well. I was uh, honored to be able to visit and uh, research so many things, especially on energy crisis with uh, war correspondent uh, Michael Yan. I really, I greatly admire him. And he, uh, he thinks that whatever happens uh, will affect in, in Western world will affect to directly to my country. And I'm trying to wake Japanese people up by letting know what is happening in Europe. And as you mentioned, um, there are so many uh, things in near future that could happen. And according to Michael, he says it's too late at this point to uh, recover what we have. So we have to prepare, but it's going to only make less but the disaster will come. So I'm so worried about people in Europe too, in, in Netherlands also. And I mm -hmm. got a message uh, yesterday from a Japanese person living in Netherlands. And uh, many people, local people there are now already talking about they are not turning on the heater because they are afraid of bill or they do not want to consume much energy. And they know that it's running out. So instead of turning the heater on in the house, they are wearing more clothes, putting more clothes on. So this kind of uh, real story in daily life is already happening. And I'm in London right now. And last night I went to, went to have a dinner outside. There was this fire lamp mm -hmm. and it looked like on one side, who, who are realizing this issue is already now saving energy. But on the other hand, we are enjoying dinner outside and with a lot of fire. So I realized um, the seriousness of the media, which is not warning us enough. And we are still using this energy in this way. So I am really worried about what's coming ahead. And um, the person who was e having dinner with me look, point at this fire and saying, look, this is not just fire. We need to consider this as a fertilizer going up because it consumes not uh, natural gas. So uh, it was really frightening. And I realized not so many people still uh, re realize this. Yes, yes. It's a present danger right now. It's a present danger. And I don't even know how many people are talking about Sri Lanka and 
the people that are already suffering and not having food. But I think even in London, was it London that they were saying you can't put your heat up above 19 degrees? Uh, I, I think was I it heard London? It. Yeah, yeah, they're 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 no, putting no. in that you can't uh, you can't put your air conditioner below twenty six, I think it was, and you can't put your heat up above nineteen. So they're making sure that they're conserving their energy as winter comes, and they're actually uh, they told old people could go to the library to get warm in the winter because they won't have heat in their houses. Oh, but the other thing we learned that same trip to England was that if the heat goes off in a house in the UK, because it's humid there, the humidity, once the heat is off and the house is cold, then you get moisture and you get black mold. And the black mold, the children will have respiratory illness from the black mold. And that's coming this winter. Wow. Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> yes. And I, I saw one article about many people are trying to go to church to get warmth. So people oh, yeah. are yes, asking for help to church. Yes. So, so many <laughs> horrible things are happening too. Yep. And yeah. We have to pray. Yeah. As you said, we have to pray. That's for sure. Yes. And the things that I think uh, I'm witnessing uh, right now here, uh, the things that doesn't make sense. Um, and having this kind of issue and trying, government is trying to impose no, new regulations to people to, uh, have less consumption of energy. But the government is still trying to, for example, Germany closing the nuclear plants or trying to go for more green and when I drove to Germ through Germany from Hungary to back to Netherlands, uh, it was a 1,400 kilometer drive. <laughs> but then I saw massive tree cut and down, and they are going to uh, use this for warmth. But I right. realized this is a huge contradiction because the policy started to go for green. But then now they are cutting those green. How, how green is this? <laughs> That's yes. the question. Yes, good I question. Good question. How green is it to cut down the forests? That's for sure. Yes. Good question. Yes. And I think those things that does not make sense to us. But I think if we are to look up more broader way, I think we are witnessing the kind of decline of uh, Western European civilization. Mm -hmm. led by extreme ideology and i think uh this is not done by naturally this is done by intentional um thinking right so this is a political problem it's not an environmental problem right no no yes so yes that's a good point and i think this is comes down to um fading of faith mm -hmm. i think that's the issue we are facing whether we talk about the energy issue that's people doing this and if we are talk about um women not getting married or too much medication to control their body it's both connected to fading of faith and i was surprised uh, when i when i went to netherlands there are many churches, but many of them were turned into shopping center. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And condominiums, yes. Yes. So mm -hmm. not so many people are religious anymore there. And even the people who are rising up, like farmers or people who pro uh, support farmers' protest, I asked them how many people are religious here? And the people who talk to or like looking at each other and we don't go to church anymore. So mm -hmm. even the people who, uh, who have conservative I idea and trying to raise their voices, they are not faithful any, anymore. So I think it's not about just left 
or um, politicians. But I think the problem is mm, everybody is belonging to this problem. That's yes, I agree I with you. Realized. Yes, yeah. yes, that's 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 smart because I do believe that at the 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 more I travel around and look around, the only answer I can see is a return to the belief in God and going to church, supporting your community through the church, support, you know, uh, civic duty. So going to church, joining the school board, uh, being a, a person who is uh, joining the political parties. You know, the, the only people who are in charge now, we've left, we've left it to the radicals. No one else is, no one else is actively taking a part in the responsibility of, of running the country. And it, so it's no wonder. It's no wonder that things are not going well. Uh, and the, the media, I don't, I really don't know what's happened to the media that it's all, it's all people magazine that they're making up stories as if it doesn't have to be true. I mean, journalism used to be something to tell the truth. Or they were trying to be as close to the truth as possible, but it doesn't look that way anymore. Now it's all made up stories and none of it's true. And then there's all these people who've always trusted it. You know, the older people who've always trusted our media and have trusted our governments, they, they can't see what's going on. And they're probably not watching podcasts either. So they won't know anything other than what they get from the media. Yes, so that'll yes. just make it worse and worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's very, it's very disturbing. But, uh, well, that's why we're traveling around, though, isn't it? That's why we're traveling around and speaking, is to find all of this out, to inform everyone that it's up to all of us to tell the truth and to take an active role in saying no to things that we don't agree with. Yeah. Yes. Y yes. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree. And um, one thing I, I noticed is that I, I go to many countries and I started to see patterns. Okay. And <laughs> this is my instinct, but people who lean to, towards leftist ideas, they all look sad, like they don't look happy. And, um, and sort of like they have same face, whether mm -hmm. they are Japanese or whether they are uh, European, they have same face. <laughs> that's what mm -hmm. I have realized. And I think that's something related, related to their m m mental state. Mm -hmm. uh, meaning that they don't have a bonding connection to their family or where they supposed to belong. Instead, they belong to ideology. They cannot uh, have conform conformity in their family. So they won't, but they cannot flow away. So they are looking for it and they sometimes belong to maybe Antifa crowd or leftist ideology, le leftist party or green party. So, and uh, it made me realize to understand furthermore of one interview that I conducted in America last year. Um, I was curious about LGBT issue. And of course, um, I don't say they should not exist, of course, but it should not be ideology and it's being weaponized, of course, in Japan also. And I got an interesting opportunity to talk with a gentleman who have been, uh, who had, he is born to be man, but he got confused. So he got, uh, uh, what do you call this? A sex mm -hmm. change. Uh, yes, sex change surgery. And he mm -hmm. became women. But mm -hmm. then he realized, he thought that if he got sex change surgery, then problem within himself would disappear, but he kept suffering. So he studied psychology and then he realized, oh, this is not the solution that I have to go through. So 
he transformed to men again and he he became Christian and then he realized what we really have to go through is not the surgery, physical surgery, but to go deep into within their heart and see what makes me dislike me. And then he started started this organization called sexchangeregret.com. Mm. So I talked to him and he he said nowadays um, there is no definition for women. That's a ridiculous thing. Yes. But mm-hmm. <laughs> if we think about real basic uh, science, the, if we go look into DNA, and nothing could change DNA. And DNA is what we have given, we have re- received. Mm-hmm. So if men say he cut his body parts and he became a woman, but then he's not, he just dressed like a woman, but he is still a man. Uh, so it's like a cosmetic surgery. Mm-hmm. And his explanation was very uh, easy to understand and well thought. And what I'm trying to say is that by giving this example, is that um, because our culture has been under attack for so long, and especially attack on family value and uh, our faith within our religion, we accepted so much superstition instead of faith. And then we are trying to transform ourselves something that's not human. And so that's why we see this phenomena. I think people identify themselves as cat or dog <laughs> and sometimes people get married to a tree and in Japan there is a case that a man married to a anime character he I heard still, about that <laughs> he still wants a woman but she could he could not communicate so he decided to marry a virtual uh, person <laughs> that kind of thing is happening so individually when we see those phenomena oh, this is ridiculous and we want to make fun of them or we wanted to attack them. But instead, what we really need to do is what makes you hate yourself and treat them so that they can find their way through. And because we, especially, I would say people, uh, conservative people, but without faith, I would say, try to make so much fun of those people that they feel that, oh, we are victim once again. And they became more weaponized against our civilization. So we need to have them in our side by right. introducing them more hope. That's what, um, that's why I think, uh, Dr. Peterson's show is very, uh, popular too. And we need to realize that this is not just about political issue, but it's about to protect our civilization. And maybe we need to re- renew it in a tra- traditional way. That's what I uh, realized. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> oh, good. That was a good explanation. Very clear. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, that's good thinking for sure. This is such a deep problem right yes it's such a deep problem and it seems like it could be solved politically but it can't be solved politically it's much deeper than that yes i I completely uh, agree with you yes so well where else are you going to go before you go home or are you flying home from london now I uh, I would like to focus on American midterm election because okay. uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> Japanese people got excited in last election in 2020 more than our own election. <laughs> 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 so I would love to go to America next and report from there to uh, let people know what is really happening. And I real I am really afraid that this may be the spark point to cause a civil war many american people have mentioned this also Mm. but um i hope it will go peaceful way 
But whatever happens in America will directly affect my country and rest of the world. So, yes. And at this point, uh, because that the reason why many Japanese people interested in American politics is because uh, we are heavily dependent on America in national defendant, defendancy, as you, national as defense. You. Especially where I am from, I'm from Okinawa. It's a little uh, island located in southern part of Japan. And it's it has been under attack by CCP for so long. And if something goes bad in America, then that will be great opportunity for CCP to um, advance this threat. So, right. so we are really concerned about the issue there. So, and of course, Japanese people should not uh, keep, be, keep being dependent on America. We have to protect ourselves. That's the um, uh, true um, attitude of independent country. So I am one of the person who is trying to uh, have real sovereignty countries constitution. By con our constitution, we are not allowed to have force. We are only to have defense force. I see. So mm -hmm. that's why I am trying to build a better relationship America and healthy uh, condition for us Japanese. <laughs> Ah, and so is that all of Japan, or is that you're just your little island that has only defense? Is that all of Japan? Uh, all, all of Japan, because all in of Japan. defense, one, yes, all of Japan, yes. Mm -hmm. So since Pearl Harbor, probably, it's been yes. neutral. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, after World War II, yes. Now, have you been to any of the Eastern European countries? Uh, I've been to Hungary. Oh, yes, you've been to Hungary. Yes. Mm -hmm. What did you find there that was uh, interesting? I, um, I got to be there of only three days. Mm -hmm. but I interviewed a very uh, interesting person. His name is, I have to pronounce it uh, correctly, uh, in H Hungary pronunciation, uh, Mr. Koshkovic Zoltan. Mm -hmm. Very uh, good. <laughs> and... <laughs> I went to Budapest <laughs> and mm -hmm. I interviewed him. And when I started to interview on my uh, for my show, and I said, I'm in Budapest. And he said, please wait, we need to record it from the beginning. And he said, please pronounce Budapest, not Budapest. <laughs> and uh, I apologized to him, of course. And I realized it's really important to respect their culture and how they mm -hmm. pronounce. And by him telling me, I, I, it was really great education for me. And I realized how uh, proud he is to be a, a Hungarian. Mm -hmm. So I got even greater respect for them. And um, he explained to us what uh, he, his country is dealing with. And he does not back off at all. And he doesn't apply, uh, apologize to EU. <laughs> Instead, he will attack back because he needs to protect his country and the traditional value. That's what mm -hmm. I really admire. So Hungary is a great country. Budapest, we have to visit. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. Well, I we went to Budapest and we visited people and they said that it was a very safe place to be that you can walk late at night and you don't feel like there's uh, any uh, any predators around you feel safe and so that's very healthy I think and um, we also talked to parliamentary uh, people about their family policy I don't know if you learned you must have learned maybe about their family policy uh, if a woman, if a woman and a man want to get married young, they don't have to pay income tax until they're twenty-five years old. Wow! That oh, way, I, I didn't know that. so they get to finish their university degree or uh, set up a family, and they get to keep all their income. So that's very helpful. And if a mother, once a mother has a baby, she pays 25% less income tax for the rest of her life if she has one baby. And wow. if she has two babies, 
then she pays more. I think it's 50%. If she has three babies, it's somewhere around 75%. And if she has four babies, she doesn't ever pay income tax ever anymore. And so they have increased the percentage of women who are in the workforce because they make more money because they don't have to pay income tax. So it's not that people are not working. They're working. And they've cut the abortion rate by 40% with no compulsion. Wow. So, mm. and grandparents, if you're a grandparent, they give you an income tax break so that you can take care of your grandchildren. If you have more than two children and you need a bigger car, they will uh, subsidize the, the cost of a bigger car. So they'll do a lot to ha try to help people have a family there. And uh, it's a, I thought, well, it looked like because it brought down abortion by 40% and it's brought down the divorce rate substantially and more women are working. So it looks like it's uh, a very good policy. So Hungary, I also agree, are doing a good job. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, it sounds like they know how to impose a policy according to Mother Nature. Yes, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, because here in Europe, or of course in Japan also, whatever government does, it goes against Mother Nature and it disrupts. So it's mm -hmm. almost like if government doesn't do anything, then society will go well. <laughs> so we have to, maybe Japanese government should learn more from Hungary. Well, what we're hoping to do is to have uh, good policies from every country be shared. And then, you know, policies that have already been put in place that we have outcome data for so we can tell how it's going, then other countries could try that too. Instead of trying something absolutely new that no one has tried yet, we can tell each other what's worked in our countries and help everyone and tell, help all the countries. And that would be something that could be done throughout the world. So I think we need to communicate more. You know, I mean, we haven't communicated with uh, Russia, with Putin through COVID, and now look what's happened. So we have to communicate more. There's no doubt about it. So you never yes. you never got to the Ukraine, I, I imagine. Huh? <laughs> no, uh, I, I did not. <laughs> no, I'm neither did we. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's... That's a problem that's going to take a lot of negotiation and going to take a lot of diplomacy to uh, to come out of, you know, because from war, war is destruction. Yes, so, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I don't know very much. I don't know enough about that to talk about that. I can just pray for them, that's all. So I do. <laughs> Yes, uh, I see many Ukrainian flags uh, within Europe and mm -hmm. in this country too. And um, I think uh, for us or mm, people who do not engage in politics, nowadays it's difficult to see and make comments about war because we don't, we are not informed enough to yes, make right. any decision or to import, impose a policy. So it seems like uh, we've been directed by certain way for certain people. So I'm trying to make myself be cautious about being manipulated by information and mm -hmm. media. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Uh, one thing I realize is that uh, Japanese government is uh, also doing sanctions against Russia. But mm -hmm. what brought this, uh, the outcome of this is becoming Russia and China come closer and make even more tension for our national defense. Meaning yes. recently one American journalist, uh, she's, uh, her name is, I, I forgot her name, but she came to one of the disputed, um, camp called Camp Schwab, mm -hmm. disputed by media, I should say. And she took videos and she spread information that local Okinawan people are fighting against American base. 
And oh. Yes, and like the construction of a base is destroying the environment, that kind of narrative. Mm. But then I realized, how should I see this phenomenon? And I dig into what she does. And then I found out that she used to host a show in Russia or Russian TV, meaning that um, this is just my analogy. <laughs> so I should, I should tell in advance that this is uh, just my opinion. But um, the journalist who used to work uh, in Russian TV coming to Okinawa, coming to Japan, meaning that their media is interested in creating more division within Japan. Mm. So for us, um, going for pro-Ukraine, we have to be careful what will bring us in a different perspective. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, no, it's a complicated problem. I heard that uh, the leader of the Ukraine, Zelensky, stopped Russian being taught in the schools. Oh. And that was before the war broke out. So, you know, there's there was trouble there previous to the war. There's no doubt about it. And knowing all of the knowing all of the uh, issues that brought this war about, like we we just don't have we don't have the whole story. Yes. And yes, so it's yes. very hard. It's very hard to say that you're pro Ukraine or pro uh, Russia because we we just don't know enough of of the situation. The best thing to do would be negotiation, diplomacy, and negotiation. Yes. But yes. <laughs> to keep everyone safe, you know the the Japanese people for sure, and the Taiwanese Taiwanese people. We have to try to keep everybody calm and safe. I mean, we're off to Australia in November. And uh, we're off to Singapore and Bangkok in December. So maybe we'll learn some more. Oh, I'm sure we'll yes. learn some more. Yes. And I, I just one thing I hope to my government is that as a Japanese government, Japanese government should be Japan first, not Ukraine first. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yes. Yeah, because I think, well, I don't know, but the Ukrainian people, as far as I know, have received a lot of funding from outside their country. And so it isn't clear that it's a Ukrainian and Russian argument. You know, yes, that's not yes, clear. Yes. That's not clear at all. So, mm. mm -hmm. but, uh, yes, 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 yes. Um, I I understand too. Yes. Yeah, yeah. These are trap. These are tricky, tricky problems. So, one of the things that I've heard about Japan. So I can tell you things I've heard about Japan. You can tell me if it's true or not. So, um, I've heard that in Japan. Many uh, of the men are no longer uh, getting married, no longer getting married, no longer having sex or getting married. Is that true? Uh, we, we see those articles, yes. And uh, the marriage, the age that they get married is mm -hmm. going uh, more up. up. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. So, so how, how old are they when they get married now? Uh, I think not so many people getting in their 20s, I mean, 30s, 40s. Mm. And right. For my experience, I am 33 and I have mm -hmm. many cousins. In I am the one of the youngest. So many of them, 34, 35, 7, they have not got married. Mm -hmm. And this is mm -hmm. common. This is common. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I think not only in Japan, but also in North America, uh, the same kind of trend is going on in North America. Have mm -hmm. you noticed any of that going on in Europe, or have you looked into that at all? 
Um, I heard a uh, divorce rate rate is much uh, high higher in Western society, and it's like normal for them to have somebody divorce in their family or friends. Yes, and divorce rate it's really getting higher in Japan, but compared to Western society, we still have a uh, low lower rate. And Any- yes, but I think we are following same path. So Japan is falling behind. So we gonna, in, if we keep going in this path, then we will eventually catch catch up. That's the uh, outcome, I think. Yes, but uh, I I learned one thing that um, um, because I see this uh, declining faith in Western society, but compared to this in Japan, many younger generation started to go to shrine. This is a okay. very su- surprising thing to me, but um, men or women, uh, men or bo- women, both, both. both. Uh-huh. Younger they get, they tend to be more conservative or tend to be more religious, and they don't trust media. So this tendency is very good in, in Japan, mm. I think. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good news. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but well, I do know too that uh, in Canada. And maybe also in the states, I'm not sure that there's more young men going to the Orthodox religion. So mm-hmm. they're finding that there's uh, younger people coming to, back to the church. So that's also good news. Uh, I don't, I didn't find that in Europe yet. Uh, I've asked people here, and they, no one has told me that that's happening. But it is happening s- somewhat in North America, and now it sounds like it's happening in Japan. So that's that's good news. Yes, um, I think this is uh, this trend is natural. But in order to increase this or to make it as a normal society, then we have to fight against uh, globalism, because I think the globalization is the one which led this uh, outcome, the situation now. So. I'm trying to wake Japanese people up that uh, we have to realize our true enemy. It's not just China, or it's not, of course, it's not America, but they want to make Japanese people hate America. But real um, enemy is what's above. Yes. So I'm trying to bring this awareness. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I was in, uh, I, I took a small trip yesterday to Bruges, in Belgium, it was a beautiful. It's a beautiful little ancient city. Uh, there was a tsunami in the 15th century that separated it from the rest of Belgium, and so that's why it is still uh, an ancient city. Is because it was forgotten for a long time. That's what I learned from the the tour guide yesterday. But something that was very interesting about the tour guide is she talked a lot about climate change. And, you know, that that term climate change, people just use it as if it is to be believed, to be accepted. You know, oh, we've had lots of rain, that's because of climate change. Or, oh, we've had more wind lately, that's because of climate change. Oh, you know, it's, uh, it's very hot today, well, that's very unusual because of climate change. Our weather is getting... It's not as good anymore. And and these are narratives that people are sharing with one another and just accepting. And, and that's been brought to us by the media mm-hmm. and by invent- environmentalism. Oh, yes. Uh, when I a- arrived at uh, the airport in London, the first sign that I saw was about climate change at the it airport. Was, eh? <laughs> yes. So it has became sort of like a cult religion that we yes. have to all engage in this. And I'm trying to see. Ah, yes. Okay. I so I, I will read this sign. We mm-hmm. need to talk about the elephant in the airport, climate change. That's the mm-hmm. sign that I, the first sign people who landed in Heathrow airport will see this. So it has become a religion or it uh, imposed us to become our religion, pseudo-religion. Yeah. 
And uh, one video I would like to um, introduce is mm-hmm. called um, They Live. The title is They Live. Ha- have you seen this movie before? No, no, I uh, haven't. It's a very unique movie. It's old. But um, the main character, he works at a he, construction site. He works mm-hmm. at a construction site. But one mm-hmm. day, strangely, but he finds a sunglass on the street. And he just wore it. And then the world suddenly changed. And oh, I know. It's, it's, I've watched it, but it was, it's, it has a different name. Oh. I, I know that, I know that movie. So, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. I know the movie, but it's got a different name. Uh, oh, okay. Yes. Uh, Ryan, Re- I think Ryan Reynolds is the actor. Uh, yes, I think. Yes, yes right? Yes. Yes. Ryan, yes. yes. Yeah, that's a fantastic movie. Yes, what a, it helped were me you want, to understand. What, yeah, what did, how did it help you? How did it help you? Uh, so uh, uh, before I study information operation, I, I was only focusing on um, little newspaper. Oh, they're bad people. They are just lying to us. How can they do this? This kind of level. But I realized that the real information campaign, we do not realize even we are in it. That's the real mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. So by looking at this video, um, uh, movie, I realized all the advertisement, any company, all the company like, um, fashion company. If you look at, uh, fashion week or if you go to a bookstore, if you go to, if you go, in a, if you book in a hotel room, all the hotel room in, in the, in the restroom area, they say, please, uh, use, don't use the new toilet roll because we want to save the world. It's happening all the world, all, all over the world. Yeah. But they are doing this in their company, within company, each offices, but all of this is orchestrated, orchestrated orchestrated sorry yeah yeah by the people who impose this ideology or propaganda so yes the big have, big biz, big business media and government all together yes. yes so everywhere you look you see the same propaganda in a different customized way so by wearing these sunglasses i when i landed at heathrow airport oh it it says uh, obey, or <laughs> this is like eat, <laughs> that kind of uh, view. And it uh-huh. helped me a lot. O- also, I used to get angry when I see those propaganda movie or propaganda mm, commercial. But by me getting angry is also their plan because they want to di- make a division between us. So yes. people who get happy with this climate change, then they belong to this one, this group. People like me who get angry or they're lying again belong to this group. By mm-hmm. creating this, they wanted to make us fight each other. Then they will get the benefit. So I, re- I learned that I should not get angry, but instead step out of this group and then see what they are doing to us. And we need to point out who is doing this to both of us. That's how we can get re- united mm-hmm. and then we see the real enemy that's what they do not want us to do so that's what we need to do <laughs> ah very good i like that yes exactly right exactly well i'm going to do that now when i go into the airport that's what i'll do i'll practice i'm going to practice that walking down the street i'll practice that i think jordan practices that all the time you know because he'll walk down the street and he'll see a building that was built and it's uh it's not beautiful you know so it's made in a it's made out of cinder blocks and uh the windows aren't uh inviting and beautiful and you can't tell where the door is because there's glass everywhere and and he gets angry at the he gets angry at the building because he sees that it's uh it's not it's not something that's inviting people in anymore. You know the old buildings where they had columns on both sides of the door and an arch so you knew where the door was and you could walk in and they are inviting you in. 
So we went to New York and we were visiting with a, an architect. His name is Peter Pinoyer. Uh, he builds classically styled buildings in New York. And he said that these modern buildings, the way they build them, they are anti-human. So today I went to the EU Commission in Brussels, which is a monstrous conglomerate of buildings. It's abs it's as big as it's as big as the city itself, you know. There I don't know how many buildings belong to the EU, but they're each monstrous buildings. And they're all very, very modern looking buildings. Uh you'd have no idea how many people are in there or or if they're looking out or you like you just can't see. They're not human they're not human sized buildings and and they're not inviting you there. You know, when you, we first arrived, we had to walk up two flights of stairs outside. So you don't even know where you're going because you're outside still, but you're walking upstairs. You can't see the building or anything from there. So you're walking and then you come out onto a cement uh, patio, a very large cement patio. And then you walk over to this building and you're inside, but you have... I wouldn't be able to go there by myself. I wouldn't have had any idea where to go, how to get in, or even how to get out. So these modern buildings too, and that has been quite a while that they've been built. And I went to East Germany and West Germany. And if you go to East Germany, we went to the uh, Stasi Museum, which was uh, a jail, a prison in East Germany. And the fellow who runs the museum was a prisoner in that museum. And so he was telling us about being, he was there for a year when he was 19 years old. His father had died and uh, he had come from a very loving family. And uh, his uncle had been sending him American jeans and t-shirts and things. So he was listening to Deep Purple music from the 60s. He was listening to uh, music from the 60s, wearing American clothes, and then his father died, and he was listening to a shortwave radio, and he heard how many people were being killed trying to get over the wall between East Berlin and West Berlin, but nobody was talking about it. He didn't know that, but because his father just died, it became very important to him, and he made a big banner. And he took it to university the next day, but before he could unfurl it, the police came and picked him up and put him in jail and charged him with conspiracy and kept him there and then brought all of his friends and put them each in a cell and interrogated them and then brought his girlfriend and sat her across from him and had her show him her wrists, and her wrists were bandaged. They had bandages around them, and the police said, it's a good thing we got there in time to save her life. We hope this doesn't happen again, because they were trying to get him to admit to all these crimes. So he admitted to the crimes and was kept there in a cell, and so was his girlfriend, for an entire year. Anyway, he lived, and he showed us around the museum, but while we were in East Germany, we saw that every building looked the same, absolutely the same. You know, the communist, uh, the communist style is to make everything beige and, uh, and non nondescript. So there's no, no, uh, you couldn't ever tell anybody which building it was because they all look the same, right? So they keep everything anonymous. That's how they divide. They divide people. Uh, and what's happening in our society uh, with uh, turning away from each other, it's uh, dividing us again. It's very disheartening to see, but we have to talk about it. We have to talk about it and get people to think and pay attention and maybe give them some ideas, like your idea of, looking at these signs and realizing that this is this is something that's it's above us it's trying to guide us but we don't have to accept it
We can watch it, but we can talk with each other and understand it and be stronger when we speak to one another. Anyway, it's, um, you have to think it through and talk about it to understand it. Yes. Um, for the course of uh, me learning about information operation, one book which helped me a lot is called Rape of the Mind. It talks about... Um, who's, who's it by? Uh, it's used me low. Uh, it's oh, a Dutch okay. psychiatrist mm -hmm. and wrote in 1956, if I recall it correctly. Rape of the Mind. Yes. Rape and of the Mind. Yes. Uh, what I learned is that um, I think it's related to our blindness of we can be omnipotent. Uh, our body can we think uh, we sometimes fall this trap that whatever we think is created by here <laughs> but mm -hmm. actually our body can be heavily manipulated and this book talks about giving the example of how Soviet uh, during the Soviet era how they tortured people and he talks about mm, not torturing physically, but torturing mentally. Mm -hmm. uh, they can influence much more to human being. Mm. And then it a little bit describes about how our nerve system reacts to the fear. And so what I'm trying to say is that uh, I think we need to uh, understand how easily our body can be manipulated by outside influence. For, yeah. for example, if we go to a store and there are so many chocolates and I'm thinking, which one should I get? But I think I am choosing the chocolate, but maybe the chocolate package is attracting me and <laughs> chocolate package is picking me. <laughs> so this kind of uh, mechanism, advertisement, it's really ha have huge influence. And this is just a daily life story. But by reading Rape of the Mind, we can understand what has been done nowadays to, to us so that we can realize, oh, something, somebody above us trying to manipulate us. I think it gives us a chance to realize this existence and mm -hmm. the mechanism that it can really happen, and it really happened. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and it's happening. Yes, yes. it's happening. <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a rape of the mind by Jost Merlo. Uh, Merlo. Yes. yes. M e e r l o o. Yes. 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 So that's from. You said it's from the fifties. Yes. He himself uh, got captured by Nazi, and mm -hmm. then he got tortured once. And he realized, if I get caught twice, then I will be dead. So he escaped to different country, and then he specialized in this kind of study. Mm. Yes, so it was a really interesting book to read, yes. Yes, it says Merlot's asserts that totalitarian methods can turn anyone into a traitor. Yes, and yeah. happily, but they don't realize that it's been, like their mind and their mouth act differently. <laughs> I was saying it clearly what I have done as war crime, but I knew I didn't do it. Just that kind of mentality. Right, yes. right, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll take a look at that book. Thank you for that. Rape of the mind. <laughs> yes. So much trouble. So do you have anything further that you want to add to the conversation? Lastly, I would like to really thank uh, Tami. I call you respectfully Tami <laughs> and for this opportunity. And uh, I'm trying to bring a world who are fighting to protect their family and their country all come together. So this is really uh, important for me to be able to speak with you. And mm -hmm. you and Dr. Peterson is going all over the world to 
uh, create this unity. Mm-hmm. And also, I heard、uh, you are planning to do a、uh, real、um, world conference <laughs> for the world.、Mm-hmm. Uh, Next summer. To, yeah, World Economic Forum. So I hope it will、uh, successfully go. And I don't, I don't even hope, but I, I hope that you, you will have great influence on, on Japan. And we, can, we will do whatever we need to do too. So thank you so much. My pleasure. And thank you for coming on my podcast. It was a, an honor to speak with you. <laughs> <laughs>